Okay, let's talk a little bit about analyzing transactions using the expanded accounting equation. Well, the first step here is going to figure out what our expanded accounting equation Okay, so here's our um, expanded accounting equation. Remember, it starts with our ale, which is our, and I'll, I'll write that down for you. I like to teach students the basic accounting equation is ale. You think about ginger ale or the alcoholic type of ale. That is the fundamental foundation for accounting here, our ale. And that stands for assets equals liabilities plus, ah, sorry, I shouldn't have uh, highlighted that part, the E for equity. So assets equal liabilities plus equity. And remember, assets are things that we own. Liabilities are things that we owe. And then equity is the difference between what we own and what we owe. And equity is actually broken into two components. You can see here, common stock plus retained earnings. And then retained earnings gets further broken down into common stock plus revenues. So we've got these two components. And then retained earnings gets broken into common stock plus revenues minus expenses and minus dividends. So expenses decrease our equity. Dividends decrease our equity. But in both cases, with expenses and dividends, we're paying monies out of the business, which is why our equity is going down. Revenues increase our equity. Revenues are how a company makes their money. And then common stock are monies that come into us from our investors. And in exchange for that investment, we give them common stock. Okay, so now we can go ahead with the rest of the Okay, so here we have an example. And we have uh, some transactions that we need to analyze. So it says, Greg invested 35000 cash and a used truck with a fair market value of $10,000 in the business in exchange for the company's common stock. All right, so we need to think in terms, again, of this basic accounting equation, our, our ale that has been expanded to common stock plus retained earnings, which is actually our retained earnings is our revenues minus expenses minus dividends. Okay, so what happened if Greg invested 35000 into the cash into the business? Well, let's stop right there. He invests $35,000 cash into the business. What category is that? Is that going to be an asset, a liability, or an equity? Well, assets are things companies own. So cash is going to be an asset for that particular business. So we're going to go ahead, and our assets are going to go up by $35,000. Specifically, my cash is going to go up. Let's take another look here at, he also contributed a used truck with a fair market value of $10,000. So he gave cash and a truck. Well, a truck obviously is a type of asset. It's something else that businesses own. So I'm also going to increase my asset truck for $10,000. And in exchange for that cash and that truck, Greg is going to get common stock. So my common stock is also going to increase by, in this case, $45,000. Okay. So we have our basic accounting equation here. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. And we can almost draw like a line right here. <laughs> Sorry, my, I'm a little crooked. But um, this side of the accounting equation, the asset side went up by 45,000, and this side of the accounting equation went up by 45,000, specifically our common stock. Okay, hopefully this will get a little bit easier as we go along. All right, let's do the next one. We paid $1,800 cash to purchase office equipment. Well, anytime you pay cash, your assets are gonna go down. So that's usually a pretty easy one. If students can figure out what happens to cash, uh, then they know what's happening on the asset side. So if we pay cash, my asset, sorry, my asset cash is going to go down $1,800. And then it says to purchase office equipment. Well, the key here with this accounting equation is that it has to stay in balance. It doesn't mean all of the entries have to be on one side and the other side. We can have all entries on one side 
as long as they balance. And that's going to be the case here in this particular example. Cash is going to go down by $1,800, but in exchange for that $1,800 in cash, my asset equipment is going to go up $1,800. So the net effect on the asset side is going to be zero. Those two will cancel each other out. So the basic accounting equation is going to go ahead and stay in balance here. Okay, this time we purchased $600 of supplies on account. So we think about that. $600 of supplies on account that we bought. So we're bringing supplies into the business. Supplies is an asset. So my asset supplies is going to go up by $600. And then it says on account. Anytime you see that phrase on account, you need to understand that means we're buying it on credit. We're going to have to pay for that later. And things that we owe are liabilities. So my liabilities here are also going to go up $600. Specifically accounts payable because it says we purchased it on account. So in this case now, my accounting equation, supplies went up $600, liabilities on the other side of the accounting equation went up $600, so we're okay. Everything we do in accounting here, that accounting equation has to stay in balance. If it doesn't, you're doing something wrong. Okay, let's do the next one. It says we perform services for cash customers and receive $1,350. So we performed a service, which is what many businesses are in business to do. They either perform a service or deliver a product. And we got paid cash, which is a good thing. So we're going to receive cash. Anytime we receive cash, we know our asset cash is going to go up, in this case, for $1,350. And what did they do in order to get that cash? We call that revenue. This particular business provides services or performs services. That's how they make their money. So my equity, specifically revenue, is going to go up by $1,350. And again, if we've got a line here. My asset side of my equation went up $1,350. And the right side of the equation, stockholders' equity, went up by $1,350. All right, moving right along. On the 15th of May, we incurred and paid salaries of $625 to the office receptionist. Okay, well, we know, again, think about any time we pay cash, what are we doing? My asset cash is going to go down $1,350. That was cash. And this is for salaries, it says, pay our employees. So what kind of account do you think that would fall under? In this case, that's going to go ahead and fall under our expenses, salaries, expense. So this is a little different. Let me explain. So my expenses are actually going to go up by um, $1,350. But the expenses decrease my equity. So we're going to put that as a negative right now, $1,350, to salaries, expense. Again, we're taking money out of the business to pay for those salaries. That's going to decrease my equity, specifically salaries, expense. Okay, so expenses decrease my equity. So my asset side of my equation is going to go down as well as my stockholders' equity side is going to go down. All right, keep going here. On the 16th, we sold the company truck for $10,000. So if you think about that, you sell a truck for $10,000, what's happening? You're going to receive cash, $10,000. So how would we enter that? In this case, that means my cash is going to go up, which is an asset for $10,000. And what else is happening when that happens? Well, my asset, in this case truck, is going to go down. So all of our transaction is happening on the asset side. Those two will cancel each other out. An increase and a decrease for the same amount will be a zero effect, and the accounting equation remains in balance. 
All right, we've got a few more. Signed a note payable for $36,200 to purchase a new truck. Signed a note payable for $36,200 to purchase a new truck. So we created a new liability. Liabilities are things we owe. When we sign a note, we take out a loan. We're going to increase our liabilities here. So we know that. And in exchange for that liability, we're going to buy a new truck. And a truck is an asset. It's something we own. So my assets are also going to go up. So let's go ahead and do that. $36,200 is going to be increased to notes payable. A note is a formal written promise to pay. It's a little bit stronger than an accounts payable, which is what we would have with our suppliers. And then my assets truck is going to go up by $36,200. So in this case, both sides of the accounting equation are going to go up by the same amount. And the equation still stays in balance, so we're OK. And when I'm drawing that line, I'm just drawing it on the equal so you can see the two different sides of the equation. Performed $4,500 of services on account for a local hotel chain. So in this case, again, now we provided services. Remember, we did that back in on the 12th as well. So you could always go back and refresh your memory there. We provided services, and if you don't recall, we increased our revenues by the amount uh, that we provided services for. In this case, it's going to be $4,500. And it says we provided those services on account. That means that they didn't pay us right now. We need to send them a bill. That's going to be an accounts receivable to us, which is an asset. So my asset accounts receivable, that's when customers owe us money. We've sent them a bill. Not to be confused with accounts payable. Accounts receivable is an asset. And that will be for $4,500. So my asset's going to go up $4,500. And my stockholder's equity is going to go up $4,500. Revenues increase our stockholder's equity. Okay, just a few more. Pay $300 of the amount owed from the purchase of supplies on May 7th. We paid $300 of the amount owed from the purchase of supplies on May 7th. Okay, so anytime we pay, that's going to be a decrease to my asset cash. And that would be for $300. And what we did back on the 7th up here, we purchased $600 of supplies on account. So when we purchased those supplies, we, uh, we would have increased our liability accounts payable. So we're going to pay that liability off here, which means that I need to decrease my liability accounts payable by, hmm, let's see the amount, it's $300. So my asset's going to go down $300, and my liability, specifically accounts payable, is going to go down for $300. Now we receive $2,200 on account from credit customers. Anytime we receive money, our asset cash is going to go up, and that was for $2,200. And then on account, so that would have been an accounts receivable. That's when our customers owed us money. So that was already an asset. So we're going to decrease our asset accounts receivable by $2,200. So the asset side of my equation is going to stay in balance. Cash went up $2,200. My accounts receivable went down $2,200. OK, we received the utility bill for the month of May. $740. The bill is not due until June 15th. We received the utility bill for the month of May. Okay, so what we have is a liability. We now have an obligation to pay the utility company $740. So my liabilities here, accounts payable, is going to go up by $740. And my expense, my utilities expense, is actually 
also going to go up by 740. But remember, we said that decreases our stockholders' equity. So we need to go ahead and decrease our equity by $740 to our, sorry, my little uh, writing tool here isn't working very well, to utilities expense. Okay, so utilities expense, hopefully you can read that. Utilities expense is going to decrease my stockholders equity by 740 and my accounts payable is gonna increase 740. Both of those are on the same side of the accounting equation and that's okay, they're gonna offset each other, the net effect will be zero. And let's do the final one here. Is let's pay $2,500 in dividends to the shareholder, Greg Richards. So anytime we pay, we know our asset cash is gonna go down, 2,500. And in exchange, we're gonna pay them dividends, and that decreases, you see the minus sign there. So my stockholder's equity is gonna go down $2,500 for specifically dividends. Okay, so hopefully that'll get you started analyzing these basic transactions.